My name is Christopher Kaiber, and I represent a citizen science project called Nachtlichter, which is organized by the German Research Center for Geosciences. Nachtlichter is a co-designed citizen science app for creating lighting inventories on unprecedented scales. I was eating lunch at school in Canada during the famous press conference, but I still remember watching the news on TV with my parents later that night. At the same time, my wife was in Berlin on the other side of the wall, so if the wall had never fallen, we'd never have met. Most people who live in cities are probably familiar with the glow in the sky at night, and images of Earth at night from space are used in a lot of advertisements and infographics. It might therefore surprise you to know that we don't actually know very much about what's causing all that light. I mean, we know it's caused by things like billboards and streetlights, but we don't know how much each of these lighting applications causes. We break this wall of ignorance by counting the lights one by one on an absolutely massive scale. So far, we've classified over a quarter of a million lights. It's simply impossible for a single research team to work at this scale, but it's the kind of problem that's ideally suited for citizen science. So we brought together a team of citizen scientists from throughout Germany to co-create and test the app. For example, we have 18 different light categories inside the app, and those were developed by a process of citizen scientists going out with pen and paper and writing down what they saw. We also attracted people from throughout Germany to organize local campaigns in their hometowns. This was really critical, because without a local champion, how on earth would I have convinced enough people to go out and count all of the lights over a several square kilometer area? One of the things that really stands out is how much the character of light changes as the night goes on. We were really surprised and happy to find out how many businesses in Germany turn off their lights, uh, signs, and shop windows late at night. We know light pollution can have dramatic and even lethal consequences for plants and animals, and that it's also an important consumer of electricity. But if we don't know what the different sources of lights are, how are governments and activists supposed to effectively address it? The other thing we hope is that when businesses see our results, they'll think twice about whether it's really necessary to have their signs on at two in the morning when people are sleeping. So the light pollution research community is going to have to figure out how we take these results of numbers of different types of lights and turn that into total light fluxes or energy consumption. But more generally, as a society, we're going to have to figure out how do we address this problem when there's so many millions of people making lighting decisions? You mean other than the bright light that's glaring through my bedroom window? More seriously, the thing that hits everybody involved in this project is that when you go outside and count lights one by one, you discover so many that are awful or serve really no practical purpose at all. We really hope that it'll be possible to take the project international, and it would also be really cool to see how lights are changing from year to year. The other thing that everybody involved in the project hopes is that people who install lights will think more critically in the process of installation. 